Tech, we went around to we went around to school to manage to see where all of our waste is going, and we broke up into groups. We went to hallways, shops, and classrooms to see what it was in the garbages, and found out there was more garbage than recycling. We found out that the school has two six-yard containers for garbage and only one eight-yard container for recycling. Uh, the two six-yard containers are dumped five days a week. They're typically three-quarters full when they're dumped, and that's about 45 yards a week of trash. The eight-yard container is full when it's dumped, but it's only dumped once a week. So eight to 45, that's kind of a large margin. And um, what we... Oh, this is one of our six-yard containers behind our shop wall. Uh, these two are by our cafeteria. This is a trash container, and then this is our eight-yard recycling container. What we found out was only 17.5% of our waste is being recycled. Connecticut state law requires 25% of all uh, your waste to be recycled material. So as you can see, some changes need to be made. We could have our uh, private hauler bring us the second eight-yard container for recycling. However, that's kind of impractical because we would have to pay for it. And by filling that, we're not really cutting down on waste. We are up in recycling, but that's not really what we want to do. We want to sort of cut down on waste and see what we can do. And that is possible because we found out that a lot of our waste is food waste and paper waste. With the food waste, we, came, we were thinking of different ideas to do. And one thing that came to mind was composting. With, our, with uh, composting, we already have two bins at our school, and we have a culinary department, so we could start composting and get some soil so we can start using it for gardening. Then with composting, we could use our greenhouse that we have in our courtyard to start growing vegetables for the culinary department so they can use it in the cafeteria or their cafe. These are two bins right behind the garages. We also found out that the school has a lot of paper waste, and that's really unnecessary because paper is recyclable. And due to the process of single stream recycling, all your recyclables can be put into one container, and from there it is then sorted at a recycling plant. The paper is shredded, bailed, and then it's sold to private markets where they will then use it to make recycled materials, or use it to make materials from the recycled paper waste. All right, so if Avitec can adapt these ideas, we can really uh, we have the great potential to reach that 25% goal. By composting, we're cutting down our food waste drastically. Um, we can, and the school benefits from that because the, the compost materials can be used in our culinary department to be made into other foods. And the paper waste, that ups our recycling and it cuts down waste as well. So we're really closing the gap there and we have uh, great potential to, to be a green school. Good morning, my name is Katie Stark and I'm with the HVAC shop. Good morning, my name is Ian Langley. I'm part of the Interim Attack HVAC shop as well. HVAC's role in Project Learning Tree was to investigate air quality and air loss around our school. Our plan was to find ways how we can reduce the amount of money Avtech spends for heating and cooling while maintaining appropriate air quality and boosting the efficiency. This is the cost of a fuel bill per year, uh, per month, per day, the student per year, per month, per day, the student going to Avtech for four years. What took place when the school ended up removing the old oil and gas boilers and replacing them with new natural gas boilers, which increased the efficiency and reduced the cost of the original gas bill? The average CO2 levels in our school are 581.33 ppm. 
This is in the appropriate range. Unfortunately, our humidity levels at 11.43% is not in the appropriate range of 30 through 60%. A potential fix is installation of a school-wide humidifier. Transportation is key to our school because it deals with students' health and it deals with our school's air quality. Our plan was to investigate and find ways how we can reduce the amount of vehicles students use to get to school. This is the total amount of parking spots, motor vehicles, staff parking, student parking, and the percentage of students who drive, ride school buses, who have rides to school, and who walk. Alternative transportation is walking or biking and makes students and staff more aware of public transportation and carpooling. Filter changes are filters are changed every three months. The cost per year is around thirty six thousand, and the cost for every three months is around nine thousand. This is a clean air filter and a dirty air filter. And if you have dirty air filters, it reduces the airflow and makes the system work harder, which will waste money. So having clean air filters will boost the efficiency and save us money. The solution is we decide that we can help maintenance by changing the filters for them so they can focus on other issues around the school. Here are some examples of air leaks in our school. These are one of many. Um, in the bottom left right here is a basement door. As you see, there's a big gap in the middle and underneath. And the, on the right here is um, the same picture but with the thermal imaging camera. Uh, the white area is the warmest temperature and the dark blue is coldest. As you can see, warm air is coming through. In the top picture is the, those are pictures of the garage doors under the thermal imaging camera. As you see, cold air is coming through the bottom and the sides of the garage doors. Potential fixes are climate weather stripping, replacement weather stripping, and gap and crack sealing. Over time, this money that we spend on this will be replaced by the boost in efficiency and more money we will save. All in all, the changes of our boiler system, fixing our air leaks, changing our filters, and um, installing a new school-wide humidifier will save Abitech a lot more money and boost the efficiency. It will make Abitech more efficient in green school. Thank you. Any questions? and this is Liam. We're from Henry Abbott Tech Plumbing and Heating Shop. As the Plumbing and Heating Department of Henry Abbott Technical High School, we were responsible for surveying the entire water system of Abbott Tech. This included the water fountains, bathrooms, sinks, toilets, urinals, and cafeteria water systems. Our primary objective was to document how water was utilized in our school and to locate potential water savings. Uh, these are some students working in our school, checking the rate of flow in water fountains and sinks. Uh, here are some facts. Older toilets can use uh, 3.55 or even up to 7 gallons of water per flush. And now federal plumbing standards specify that you can only have 1.6 gallons per flush on a toilet being installed. And even now there are high efficiency toilets that only use 1.28 gallons per flush. And uh, our school uses about 910,000 gallons of water per year. Did you know that a slow leak of five drips per minute in 47 sinks wastes about seven gallons of water a day, 210 gallons of water a month, and 1,275 gallons a year? Uh, the website below is where we found this information. <coughs> Uh, these are some students uh, working on the boilers, making sure that our water pressure is acceptable. Uh, some recommendations we have for our school are waterless urinals, um, waterless urinals, two button toilets, and uh, individual sensor for our, hop sh our shop hand wash stations. Uh, waterless urinals are a way of saving 100% of the water you would normally use in urinals. Uh, they use a gravity fed or suction design and this is a saving to more than 50,000 gallons of water per year. 
Uh, these are some examples of waterless urinals. The one on the right side is gravity fed and the other two are suction designed. Uh, gray water holding tanks. Uh, when water is needed in a toilet, it would call to a gray water holding tank, which is uh, underneath the sink, and uh, it pumps water from the sink into the toilet instead of using domestic water. Uh, this is a savings of more than 5,000 gallons of water on one toilet alone. Uh, this is an example of how it works. When you turn on the sink to wash your hands, water is put into the gray water holding tank and sterilized and then it is uh, pumped into the toilet instead of using domestic water. Uh, two mile toilets, it's a, it's a great way of cutting your water savings by half. Uh, when you have a toilet handle that dictates whether you're using soft, when you're flushing solids or liquids, it's a very efficient way of saving water. When you're flushing solids, you're only using about 1.6 gallons of water, which is what you regularly use in a normal toilet. And when you're flushing liquids, you're only using about a gallon of water. And that can uh, save you around 5,000 gallons of water per year. And you see here, the large, the large uh, flush or solid would be the small button on top, and the bottom, the bigger, the bigger uh, button would be for liquids. And uh, individual sensor for our shop hand wash stations. We have a Bradley uh, shop hand wash station in our shop, and it uses around five gallons of water per minute, and uh, it, around 75 gallons of water per day. And that adds up to about 120,000 gallons of water per year. And the same company, Bradley, makes another uh, sectional sensor head where only water comes out where your hands are being placed. So it only uses about a half a gallon per section and 7.5 gallons a day and around 12,000 gallons of water per school year. And you see here, the top on our shop, the uh, water comes out all around the sink and the other sensor would only come out where your hands are being placed. You're saving a lot of water, uh, over 100,000 gallons of water a year. Uh, any questions? I'm Lawrence Rodriguez from Henry Architect Electrical. Um, uh, Henry Architect uses a lot more electricity than your average town high school. Uh, this is just simply because uh, we have shops like uh, hairdressing and uh, Mantech. In hairdressing, there are uh, machines like hair dryers and flat irons that draw a lot of wattage. In Mantech, they use just a lot of big machinery. During the school year, our electrical sophomores and energy audit on our school. We used light meters and watt meters to see how much light came to the floor through the lights and how much watts appliances it uses. This, gives, this gave the students great job experience for later in life. This is a student on the left using a light meter and a student on the right using a watt meter. Actually, in each of the production shops, which follow as electrical, HVAC, plumbing, and uh, carpentry and automotive, there is uplighting. Uh, you have the shop floor, and there are lights that don't point down to the ground. They actually point up toward uh, the shop ceiling. So in a sense, these lights are actually useless. Uh, so there's 153 total of these uh, lighting fixtures throughout the school that use 108 watts each. Uh, when calculated for being on 188 days a year, which they are, this is wasting a total of $3,231. Uh, as you can see in the picture, uh, the shop floor is on the ground and the lights are placed right near a window where there's a, a plenty amount of natural light coming in. So really these lights are just completely useless. Hallway lighting. There's two hallways on each side of our courtyard that get plenty of natural light through the glass paneling. The lights are on the side, are completely unneeded, and also in our school's atrium, there's glass paneling on the ceiling, and the lights are on all day through there, and those are completely unneeded. So we're gonna talk about the picture on the left first. 
Uh, as you can see, there are uh, lighting on the side, which are referred to as light sconces, that are on uh, all, the, all day. And then there's a middle row of lighting that are on all day as well. So the sconces on the side uh, use 55 watts a day and, for, uh, on our, and are on for 17 hours a day, pretty much to when the sun comes up and when it goes down. Now, the, like I said, these lights use 55 watts a day, and for being ca calculated for a full year, they use around $550. Now, this isn't a large number, but when it's all added together, it all adds up, and it just saves a very large amount of money. So, as you can see, I was talking about the sconces on the side. That's the row on the, the both sides of the atrium. Now, we're going to talk about the middle row of the lights. There's eight of these lights, and they use about 65 watts each. And these lights are, again, on for 17 hours a day. Uh, if we could turn these off, it would save $216 a year. Now, like I said before, this isn't a huge number, but when all these lights and all the savings are put together, it's going to save a lot more money. Now we're going to talk about the hallways near the courtyard. There's two of these hallways, and they are both on for 12 hours a day. There's 30 light fixtures that use 108 watts each, and if these could be shut off or put on an energy-saving device, such as a photo cell, that could save $1,347 a year. So just in this picture alone, around $2,000 could be saved a year just by simply turning lights off or putting them on uh, energy-saving devices, such as a photo cell for this situation. Our school has 340 computers that use 130 watts each. These computers are in use for eight hours a day, and that is a total bill of $8,642 a year. Most teachers leave them on at night, and which, when they're on, they use 15 watts in sleep mode. If these computers can be shut off, they can save $2,000 a year. Our own teacher, Mr. Castellan, even admits to leaving his computer on overnight. <laughs> uh, our school has already taken measures to uh, save uh, electricity. Uh, we've installed solar panels, and uh, they've been up and running for about nine months now. Uh, we've generated 4,620 kilowatt hours, which is actually equivalent to powering 153 separate houses for a day. Uh, now, if you take the average household electric bill, this uh, it, it reduces it by 62.5%, uh, so it's over half. Uh, this is a picture of our solar panel on our e-house, and this is a picture on the, um, on the side of the building. And our students have learned to install and maintain these solar panels as well. As you've seen, there's plenty of unnecessary energy waste in our school, as it could be if there's artificial light on where natural light is plentiful, or appliances are used improperly, such as computers being on when not in use. How can this be fixed? Well, uh, a wide array of electrical devices can be purchased, like photo cells, motion sensors, and even timers. Just by installing these, a lot of money can be saved, and it'll eliminate lights, uh, lights when they're not necessary. Also, as you have previously seen, our students have learned to install and maintain these solar panels, which can really alone cut down on 20% or even 35% of our electric bill. They just have to be purchased and installed. Also, another effective and simple way to save energy is to inform the students and staff on how to save energy in their own classroom, such as shutting computers off when not in use or turning the lights off when no one's in the classroom. Uh, we took uh, Project Learning to a step further and felt that it was necessary to inform the students and staff on uh, how we can save this energy. What we did was uh, we have five lunch waves come through our schools and uh, we set up a little thing called a career fair where we had posters and handouts that we had handed to the students and the staff that walked by on how to just save energy at home by turning off lights, uh, how, how much energy a certain uh, light bulb uses, and how much money can actually be saved by just making these small changes. This was a great idea inspired by Mr. Delarnia. We also uh, we got to set up a little iPad as well to show them this exact Prezi to the people who were interested in what we were doing around the school. Uh, this is a pe uh, picture of the electrical uh, shop. We, uh, that's a light meter, and we were just uh, giving a little example of how to use it and uh, what to do with it. This is a picture of uh, one of our plumbing students. Uh, he, those are the handouts that we handed out to each of the, uh, each of the students that walked by. And then this is our HVAC shop. We have posters. Uh, I think it's right there. Yeah, we have posters. That, um, that's the exact poster that we use and uh, how we can save energy and uh, just making small changes around the house, like I said. And that's it.
for the judges. Actually, we have a couple of handouts that we're gonna bring to you. That's in a box back there, but we're gonna get them up to you right now. Yes. If you if you if you saw in the pictures, uh, we have what is, we have a courtyard in our school, and it's all glass paneling. And it, like when you walk through the highway, it, uh, the at the high, highway, excuse me, the hallway, it actually just blinds you from the amount of natural light that comes in. Now, if they can be turned off on days that are like uh, when there's plenty of light, or maybe and just kept on when it's a cloudy day or something, then yes. But there's so much light that pours in through that courtyard and the glass paneling in the atrium that they're just very unnecessary and it's just a waste of money. <clears throat> Any other questions? No. All right, thank you for your time. We're all thankful.